Why, hello there, everybody. How are you doing today? It's me again. And, well, to quote the 45th president of these United States of America, the truth is a force of nature. Now, any man that thinks, believes, or even hopes that he can stop a force of nature, well, he's an idiot. Meaning, absolutely nothing can stop what's going on in this country. Meaning, absolutely nothing can stop the truth. Now, to drive that point home, just to show you how powerful the truth is, whoever wields it, whoever tells it, and whoever stands in it, all you have to do is look at all of the little bitty people who have never taken an oath, who are now coming out and telling the truth about the evils that have happened to both our country as well as them. These whistleblowers showing you the documents, these victims who are now coming forward and telling everyone the truth about how they were mistreated abused, violated, and look, now that they are telling the truth and standing, not demanding, just telling the truth, showing everyone the truth. Now, it's making you, me, we free, because we can all see now that it's been going on for decades. Now, it's bothering a lot of you all because, well, you're, you're convinced that the so-called authorities are going to come do something bad and evil to you. That's a problem. Because all of these authorities have taken an oath. All, every authority structure, all authorities have been established by Almighty God. Okay? If you do not, if the authority, if the individual, in order for the individual to hold the office, to hold the title of an authority, any authority, they must meet Almighty God's standard, irregardless of whether or not they are a Christian. So says Almighty God. Okay? If they do not meet the requirements to maintain or hold that title or hold that office, then, and they still hold the office, then they are an imposter. They are mocking Almighty God. And you are seeing exactly how many imposters that our country, just our country, has, let alone the world. And you're finding that out not from other authorities, but from people just like you. People who they've got no, they have no, they have no, no title. They're just now telling the truth because, well, they're tired of what's being done to America. The simple fact: no one. Just so I'm clear, God set up his authority structure so that what is happening 
I'll just keep it with the United States of America, never happened. You should not, you, law-abiding citizen, whether you are a Christian or not a Christian, you should never be, in, be put in a position where you have to fear the authority if you are as a law-abiding citizen. The Word of God is clear. The Word of God is true. In Romans chapter 13, the only one who should fear the godly authority or Almighty God's authority structure is those who do evil. And spreading fear to both non-Christians as well as Christians alike. Because Christ died for both. The only reason why you are a Christian, Christian, is because Christ died for you. Okay? You were just smart enough to see that you needed His help. That you needed His forgiveness. You need to get rid of your sins. But no one, God is, God, no one should feel threatened by either all, an authority of Almighty God, which Romans chapter 13 calls a minister of Almighty God, or you should never ever fear Almighty God. Sinners should not fear Almighty God. The only ones who should fear Almighty God are those who do evil and the simple fact that they are making you fear fear them that's an evil thing because they are doing it while they are impersonating a minister of Almighty God that's why I know this situation's over and done with and what you're seeing going on all over the country is all of the fakes and frauds and imposters and counterfeits are being outed not by authorities but by citizens just like you me we the people they've had enough of being bullied it's time to stand up to your bully but again if you are afraid or you're choosing to refuse to do it it's okay nobody's mad at you it will have no effect on the outcome of either what's going on in the country or with my situation. Okay? Once the situation is resolved, then you will be made free. And then you will be able to stand. You're just scared and nobody's mad at you. Especially Almighty God, which is the only one that you need to really concern about pleasing anyway. Okay? If you will not stand up for yourself, no one else will. Which of course is probably the reason which is of course the reason why you are being bullied. Because well you're just too afraid to stand up for yourself for whatever reason and whatever it's okay. You're not going to hell. You it's you're just scared. It's okay. Almighty God just so I'm clear, is removing all of those threats, all of those bullies, all of those hindrances, so that you will not be afraid anymore. And he's raising up people, just like I said. It's not just people like me. It's just not. It's, it's not like it's. It's not uh, people with titles. It's not superstars. Every or the ordinary. Let's look at what the guy just did with. Uh, you know, I don't want to say the word. But you know, he just came forward with Project V. And look, at first, let's use him as an example. At first, the first time he did it, he was scared. He was hidden behind a cloak. Black, you know, in the shadows. They altered his voice. Well, they found out who he was. He's still there. Nothing happened to him. Look at that. And now what? What did he say? You, I don't know, did you see the video or not? I don't know, find it. It'll do you good. He said, look, if I stayed in the shadows, then it's just a conspiracy. But if I stand and give the people, show the people the documents, oh, like kind of like what I've been doing, then what have they got to say? What are they going to do? 
he's freeing up people with the not himself but the truth that he is showing you me we is freeing everyone up he is doing the very same thing that I've been doing all these many years he is reporting crimes just like I've been reporting crimes I've told you folks there are millions of us so that should encourage you folks the big bad is only big and bad because they've got you convinced that they're big and bad. As soon as you stand up to the big bad, you know what you find out? You find out that the big bad is really a wimp, is really a coward. He's nothing more than a bully. But I digress. Okay. It's time to stand, folks. It's time to stand. It's time to stand. But again, nothing can stop what's going on in this country. Nothing can stop all of the threats, all of the bullies, all of the obstacles are being removed and will be removed and no one, absolutely no one and absolutely nothing can stop that from happening. Period. Now, today's video, yeah, I know, okay. I'm going back to me, so if you don't want to watch it, if you, if you don't want to hear anything else about it, you're tired of hearing about it, great, fine. Stop the video, turn it off, whatever, I don't care. It's, 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 I am, I am telling you, I am telling you exactly why I know it's over and done with. I, again, I am not a victim. It's not a conspiracy. You can clearly see if you watched any of my videos that this involves well more than just me. In fact, it started before me. Okay? But again, I am the last one standing. I'm the only one because, well, well, we have already know that why. So I am going to again. We're going to go all the way back in time to December second, and using their own documents, I'm going to show you, and you you are going to see clear as day. Exactly, I can ex I can show you exactly how they jumped and what they did each step of the way and all it's going to do all, all this all that's happening is I'm showing you why when the cuffing and stuffing starts you're going to know why the cuffing and stuffing is starting and it's going to start real real soon I mean real soon I'm not making anything happen I'm not demanding that anyone do anything I'm telling the truth I'm telling the truth that Almighty God has shown me and given me, the documented tr truth, and then I'm standing and believing as well as watching Almighty God move. So let's get on with this video. It's long enough already, and again, if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. But once again, it's time to not think, it's time to know, it's time to not tell, it's time to show. So once again, here we go. Okay, this again is the 60-year-old man. He was the first one that was kidnapped. But what I want you to look at here is, he didn't, it's not listed who he talked with. It just says the suspect called the listed number and requested a male escort. Okay. Then this is the 67-year-old man. Oh, well, I'm skipping me. Then here says that I spoke with Strickland. Then the 67-year-old man, he is what well, he spoke with Etheridge or Frack. Then the two roommates, they both talk with Strickland. Okay, and then the last two guys that were kidnapped, we've never seen these before. He's 49. He spoke with Strickland. And this guy's 24. And he spoke with Strickland as well. Okay, so why is this important? Well, let's go back and I'll, sh I'll show you, these are their documents, what's going on. Okay. We don't have to go over this. 
we don't know. It's obvious. Look, the, it's obviously something. Something was wrong because right down here, the capius for his arrest for violation of probation because he never showed up to the Salvation Army. He never paid the court cost. That was recalled. The case was dismissed, and the case file was conveniently destroyed. I doubt that very much, by the way. All happening on 9-4-2004. That's, uh, what, six years and five months after everything took place. Okay? So it's, it's painfully obvious that this does not document this 60-year-old man committing a crime. Okay? Now, so they give, in other words, it documents them kidnapping. So they give the Jacksonville Vice a, and if you want to get caught up on what I'm talking about, I'm not going to go over it all again, watch the previous video before this one. Okay? So they give the Vice the green light to do whatever they have to do and what they're going to do is they're going to solicit the people that's called entrapment they're going to solicit the people and uh, then uh, then show up and arrest them because what are you supposed to say? We showed up at your house. You just gave me a hundred bucks. You were trying to pay for sex. Forget the part that the police officer solicited them. That's called entrapment. Okay? So, uh, they go over the top with me. And again, I'm not going to go over it all. Uh, but they go really over the top because, well... You have to remember, these, can, these, these people with severe control f issues, no, they're control freaks, folks. They are convinced that anyone and everyone that calls up their ad has at least $100 on them to pay for sex. That's what they believe. And... The only reason why anyone calls up an escort service is because they are trying to see a prostitute. Okay? No one calls up an escort service and asks for information. Yet, that's exactly what I asked for, and that's exactly what their little document says. Okay? Again, I'm not going to go over it all. So they go over the top, and again, because they are convinced that I have, that the only reason why I called up the ad was because I wanted to pay someone for sex, they're now convinced that uh, by inserting a fictitious 14-year-old little girl into the conversation, because that's how old they told me the girl was. And again, Tube View Channel, for all the nitty-gritty details, they believe that they can just show up and, and arrest me. And then, in, in order to avoid, look, you've got, you've got $100 on you. You were trying to hook up with a 14-year-old little girl. And instead, I'm going to say... Oh, no, 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 no. I really just wanted to see a an escort. But I didn't say anything to them because I wasn't trying to see an escort. And what dum-dums don't know, or maybe they do know, I don't know. I had called up the Jacksonville non-emergency line twice reporting their crimes, their crimes of harassment, as well as their offering of what I believe to be a 14-year-old little girl. And remember, this fr uh, frack solicited me, and they recorded it. 
So when I so she said if you give me one hundred dollars I will come over to your house which is their whole goal is to just to get over to my house and give you a blow job and you can four letter word that begins with F me. That's what she said to me. What, that is what this supposed JSO officer, Etheridge, better known as Frack, said to me and what they themselves recorded. So that's why they ran at me with shotguns at the racetrack gas station was to make me think that I did something really bad because, well, they know, well, yesterday's video, previous video, okay? But I don't say anything. I don't, I never say anything, even after they hold, they handcuff me and put me in the back of a squad car and take me over to Beach Boulevard to a Winn-Dixie parking lot and then threaten me further with other JSO officers coming up to the car telling me how I'm going to be raped and other nasty disgusting things that I will never repeat now they got a problem because well they write an arrest and booking report and this is exact this narrative section describes exactly what I just said that's what they're, they're telling the Strickland and Bo Boimer is the one giving the statement. Name of person making the statement. Boimer. And Strickland is the one verifying it. Okay? He's the one taking the statement. Okay? which means they're all sitting in one little room down at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office with a cell phone. That's their escort biz company. And they get a call and then they go out. So what they're telling the, the, the uh, uh, felony misdemeanor, I mean the felony state attorney's office or the circuit state attorney's office, uh, Look, do not prosecute this. You know, hopefully, again, they, they know that there is no such thing as an attempt to loot a lascivious upon a minor. And uh, uh, it's not even called that. There is no statute anywhere that's, that's, that's called a lewd or lascivious upon a minor. The statute says in 19, said in 1997, lewd or lascivious act or assault committed upon or in the presence of a child under the age of 16. There is no statute anywhere that says that 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 uses the word minor. Because a minor is not a child according to Florida statutes. And hopefully they will know that in order to solicit a minor to prostitute themselves well, you kind of need a minor. Hopefully they'll know that. And they will not prosecute this because, well, we forgot to find out if the guy had any money. But don't worry, we destroyed all the evidence. Please, state attorney's office, please do not prosecute this. And again, the problem is Strickland and Boimer for, the, for nine months prior to this first ever reverse escort sting operation have been sitting on the computer pretending to be little boys and little girls basically they are sexualizing children simply to shame people is what they're doing and everybody that they quote unquote arrest that's a felony crime so it goes to the circuit or felony state attorney's office. Now, so in other words, 
the felony state attorney's office has seen Strickland and Boimer's name multiple times over for the past nine months. They've got no idea that this thing is going on. So they just think, they scroll down, and they do not read their numbers. Pe people, do you know, have any idea how many people get, quote-unquote, arrested? you have any idea how many, how many, just go down to the court, J1. Go down to the jailhouse jail, courtroom, J1. And, and just for giggles, you got nothing else to do? And you watch how many people come in, both felonies and misdemeanors. They're not going to sit there and read. They, they, they're going to, they're going to, they look at this. That's what they're looking at. And remember, the, this goes to the felony state attorneys. They see this, and they're like, oh, man. And then they see, well, who wrote this? Who are you arresting on? Oh, yeah, Strickland and Boimer. They got another one. Okay, and then they're not going to read. They're not going to read all of this disgusting stuff. Who wants to read about... Uh, 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 we're just going to cut to the chase. And that's what they read. They read, they cut straight to the chase. And it says the defendant admitted orally admitted orally to the entire conversation and well it was prosecuted yet I had no money there is no there is no child let under the age of 16 let alone a minor so they're having a cow because now they just documented the second time these people are control issues, all because they are can have con severe control issues, all because they are convinced that anyone and everyone that calls up any escort service has at least one hundred dollars on them to pay the the escort slash prostitute for sex, because that's the only reason why anyone would call up an escort ad that is listed in the Florida Times Union. So. Again, this is a 67-year-old man. This happens on the 4th. Okay. The sting, goes, the sting should have stopped on, on December 2nd, but they prosecute the kidnapping. Then, on the 3rd, 12-3-1997, they kidnap me. They violate, so, they commit so many, so many serious, serious crimes, it's not funny. Okay. Now, the morning, the, the, the evening of the 4th is when they kidnap the 67-year-old man with Parkinson's disease. He is, is quote-unquote arrested at 2045, okay? And who does he talk to, though? He doesn't talk to Strickland. He's talking to M. Etheridge. Why? Okay. And I showed you this before. Where is Ratley? Where is Boimer? Okay. Well, right now, all three of them, Strickland, Ratley, and Boimer, are all getting their gluteuses maximuses reamed out for what they did to me. Because I called Strickland and then uh, the good the, the little witch Sabrina aka Ratley A.K.A. Frick is the one that called me back for two and a half hours going over the top. And then in their own little handwriting, it says that 
the with the little witch Sabrina, aka Ratley, aka Frick, told him, told me that she would call me back for what? And then calls me back to tell me what? And told me told the defendant I'm not gonna go over it all again that she found a 14 year old little girl now why is that in there to make it look like to make you think that I asked her to find me something when what did she say to me she said and again it's all over on the tube you channel she they were scared to death because I had I, I had told her that she was too old I was told her that she was too old. I told her that she was too old, and uh, then after telling her that she was too old, suddenly she's been calling me up for almost two hours, two hour, about two hours and fifteen minutes. Then, because I asked her how old she was, and the easiest way to offend a woman is to call her old. So that's what I did. So. I called her, oh, I, she said 25 or 28, I can't remember, and I said, that's way too old. I like him younger. So then she pulls out of her rectum an 18-year-old little girl. Says, well, we, I have an 18-year-old little friend that's going to want to come, that would, love, that would love to see you. Wait a minute, I thought you needed money so bad, girl. See? For the rest of the story to you channel, the playlists are in the description of the video. So, what she told me was, she says, I have a 14-year-old little sister. Let me call her and see if she'd be willing to come see you. And then they call me back and then they stick Frack on the phone. And Frack solicits me, again, as she, while she is posing as a 14-year-old little girl. Because, again, their own handwriting says he was talking with a 14 year old after being told so because I wasn't told that she found a 14 year old little girl I, I was told by Frick that she had a 14 year old little sister that's why that's in there to explain their actions well, it's prosecuted, and the afternoon of uh, of the fourth, when they get in there, they 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 say we want to hear the tapes, and now these guys got to explain what they did. Well, you told us to go over the top. I didn't tell you to. Jeez, I'm Pete's. This is just what? You're an idiot. So. They're getting they're getting their gluteus maximus is reamed out, and then what happens? Said it yesterday. The 67 year old man calls, and that's why Etheridge answers this call, is because well, uh, Strickland, Boimer, and Ratley are all getting reamed out because of what they did. They went too far over the top. Because as soon as they heard, I never called back. You can't, that's entrapment. I didn't ask for anything other than information, so says their own document. So Etheridge, who's not getting reamed out yet, is answering the phone and then the 67-year-old man calls up, and then, of course, like I said, we, we were told we could solicit him. Okay, I'll come over and I'll give you a blowjob if you give me $125. Okay, uh, yeah, dummy, frack, forgets to ask the 65-year-old man if he has $125 cash. So... They drive all the way out there and, as well, kidnap a 67-year-old man, and it's going downhill fast. 
and then finally they get these two roommates they are arrested at 2330 both of them and who do they both talk to detective Strickland but what does detective Strickland do okay he finally says he wants to know, well, no, we're not going to do this again. We're not going to screw up again. We're going to find out if they've got money before we go over. Okay? So, what does he do? Uh, they, they talked to Detective Strickland and requested that two female escorts be sent to their apartment. Now, it should have stopped, it right, should have stopped right there. Because in order to, in order for law enforcement to arrest someone for soliciting for prostitution, they actually have to solicit the officer to prostitute themselves. But no, they're still on the phone. The conversation continued, and an agreement was made where both the defendant and co-defendant were to pay $100 each for sexual intercourse. He pimped out. He's playing the role of a pimp. You cannot... The stat entrapment says you cannot give anyone the opportunity to commit a crime that they would not otherwise be... Uh, be willing to commit on their own. Just because you have, want two, two female escorts to come over to your house doesn't mean you're going to have sex with them. Because what the vast majority of you all don't know, the vast majority of these escorts, they don't have sex. They just go over and spend time with people irregardless of what you holier-than-thou people think. Okay? So this one is bad as well. So, and again, they record themselves. So now, finally, they say, okay, instead of, these are the last two guys. The last two guys that were arrested on the 5th, or kidnapped, should I say, Strick, they, they both talk to Detective Strickland on the telephone. And what does he do? He does the very same thing once again. And, I know that one you can't hardly read. Okay. But they're both the same. Uh, 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 undercover prostitution, Mr. So-and-so, and again, the defendant. He's the defendant because he called the ad call an ad in a newspaper. So if you call up any ad in the Florida Times Union newspaper, you have to explain why you're calling it. And requested to be set up with an escort. Detective Strickland spoke with the defendant who said he wanted, so what did he do? He says, okay, so what do you want? Because they're not going to the house anymore. They have a hotel room now. We're not going to kidnap anybody we're going to willingly have them come to us. But they still do it wrong. They still do it wrong. Again, in order for any citizen, in order for Florida Statute 796.07 .07 to be violated, in order for anyone to solicit uh, anyone to commit prostitution, They've, they've got to do it willingly and free, free, willingly on their own. So you say, I want to meet with one of your girls. Okay, we got so-and-so over at the Motel 6 on Hearts Road. Okay, I'll be there at 7.30 or whenever. Then the guy shows up, the girl says, hey, come on in. And then the guy would say, well, look, I would like full service, which means, which means sex is what that means. He wants to have sex with someone. 
and then you know he was solicited because then they start haggling. Again, you cannot agree to pay anyone any amount of money for anything without being offered something. And again, that's where you get the $110 from. That's in the newspaper article. The defendant agreed to pay $110. Let me tell you what happened. Detective Strickland called. Uh, the guy calls up Detective Strickland. And he's like, okay, look, I am not going to get caught again. Okay? Well, let's start with the first one. This one's really hard to read. So I'll just read it for you. You're just going to have to take my word for it. The suspect called this, uh, spoke to Detective Strickland. During the ensuing conversation, the, the suspect asked to see two girls to have sex with each other. No. Nobody calls up an escort service because they're supposed to be criminals, remember? No one talks about sex on the phone. No one. It's, it is a given that if you're calling up wanting to see two girls, two escorts, it's a given that that's what you want. Okay? My situation was different because I did not call up and ask to see anyone. I never requested. The only thing I wanted was information. So says their own document. So says their recording. So... He didn't call up and ask to see two girls have sex with each other. Come on, seriously? How uncouth is that? The suspect called and asked to see two girls have sex with each other and for him to be able to join in and have sex with them. Can you imagine anybody do ask saying that to, a to an one man saying that to another man? You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. So what ha again, what happened? It, it's, uh, the guy calls up, he says, look, hey man, I'd like to see two girls. Do you have two girls that, 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 are, that work good together or something, something of that nature? Uh, yeah, I do. Really? Oh yeah, man, they, they really like each other. Uh, any idea what you, uh, so what do you, what do you want them for? What do you want to do? He says, well, so now he's all cool, he's comfortable. The guy's on, Strickland finally has his game down. It's only taken him five daggum days. And the guy's comfortable. Because he, he doesn't jump right into it, Strickland does. No, he's, he's learned you got to work your way, you got to ease him into it. But he still, he says, so what, you want to you, you have sex with both of them? Well, no, what I really like is I want to see him have sex. And again, if, if he's telling, if he told the JSO officer, if the JSO officer knows that the crime is going to be committed, then why in the world, that's a supposed crime, because there is no such thing as a criminal solicitation of prostitution. If the JSO officer, this vice detective, knows that the crime is going to be committed, why doesn't he tell the citizen, "Sir, what you're trying, what you're talking about is a crime. I'm going to encourage you not to do not to do that because this is the JSO vice." But instead, he encourages him to do it. Okay, it was all bad. It was all bad. So now they've just documented themselves kidnapping, soliciting, at the very least kidnapping seven people. But, in, but now you've got six instances where documented in their own words as well as by their own recordings that the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office Vice Unit solicited six men simply to make up for the very first initial kidnapping which is why they never ever ever plan to file or have any of these people 
any of these any 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 of this on anyone's record. But let's come back to the very first of the last two arrests. This guy is coming from the west side of Jacksonville. Walden Road East, 32244 is the zip. Okay? Where is he going to? He is going all the way over to the north side of Jacksonville, Hart's Road, to the Motel 6. 10885 Hart's Road. Okay? That's that's a long way to go okay to see somebody then this guy is coming all the way from Orange Park Florida that's Clay County he's coming from Clay County that's south of us and he's driving all the way over to the very same spot 10810 whatever it was it's not all the way on this copy Hart's Road he's driving from Hart's Road from Orange Park to Hart's Road so what's my point my point is this that's a long way to go so I do not believe, I do not believe that these last, that these two arrests, supposed arrests, were recorded. You got to tell somebody something special to have them drive from Orange Park, Florida, from another county, all the way over to the north side of Jacksonville. to see somebody meaning he here's, here's what I believe happened okay because you have to remember okay they did not find out that the 12-2 supposed arrest or the 12-2 kidnapping was prosecuted until uh, the afternoon of 12-3 because the morning session is everyone who is booked into the jail prior to midnight that's the 9 a.m. session the 3 p.m. session is everyone who is booked into the jail after midnight well he was booked the 60 year old man was booked into the jail at 121 in the morning so they're already the vice unit is already working okay the the vice unit is already working I've already called their ad on the third because I got off work I was self-employed. I had my own lawn service. I, uh, and it, it's very slow in December. It was the day after my birthday. I, I was taking it easy. I was, uh, and, 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 I was supposed to, I'm a, I'm a basketball coach, or I was, a high school basketball coach, but I had taken the 97 98 basketball season off because well I was tired I had been doing it for two years straight and I wasn't getting paid to do it I was volunteering to do it so that night 12 that that night or that or should I say uh, the Thursday that Thursday or Friday I had just talked to a coach they were going to be playing the Andrew Jackson Tigers at Andrew Jackson and I was think seriously considering going and seeing the guys play because well they were my guys I was I wasn't quitting coaching I just took the year off 
and they don't play high school basketball on Wednesday nights. So, uh, I was, it was either Thursday or Friday night game that I was telling the coach that I was thinking about going to. Okay? So, uh, but this, when I got, when, when I called the ad, it was, it was like 2.30, maybe 3 o'clock when I first made the call. Well, that's when they first find out. Well, they found out. They knew that this was a bad arrest from the get-go. That they knew that this wasn't an arrest. That this was a kidnapping. I've already showed you that, Sergeant David Stevens. It's it, this is this does not document. Okay, this is bad. They were just hoping that it was written in a way that it wasn't going to be prosecuted. Problem is, it was prosecuted because well, previous videos. So when I call the phone number, they're already going, we've got to cover up for this. So you tell the guys whatever you want to say. And, well, I'm not going to go over it all, but we already know that they solicited me. They called me for two and a half hours. I called up the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office non-emergency line not once but twice, yada, yada, yada. So, uh... They do not find out if this 12-3 kidnapping is prosecuted until the next day, 12-4, the morning. So they're having a cow. So they're in there getting, their, getting reamed out. Who's in there? Uh, everybody that I just said. Okay? And they're still at the jail. These people are still recording themselves, documenting themselves. So while while Boimer, while Boimer, Strickland, and Frick, aka Ratley, are getting reamed out, the 67-year-old man with Parkinson's disease calls up, and well, you know, again, Etheridge. Etheridge solicits him and again you know they show up and doesn't forgets to ask if he has cash and while they just record themselves kidnapping somebody some uh, kidnapping someone else because again it's kind of hard to pay anyone hundred and twenty five dollars for anything if you don't have one hundred and twenty five dollars okay so then you've got the two roommates the two roommates, they as well. They finally said, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna solicit them," and this is still done at the jail. They're still sitting at the jail this whole time. They're sitting at the jail, but they do not find uh, find out that that the uh, sixty-seven year old man with Parkinson's is is uh, prosecuted until they do not know what he's going to say until the next morning on the 5th because his that's when his first appearance is is on the 5th okay they I, I, they knew what he was going to say and how do I know that well it's the same judge Araris and I don't know if you noticed this or not, but this is soliciting for prostitution. Uh, they give themselves, look at that, Bond, the, the first appearance happened on 12-5, and his arraignment date is 1-6? That's a month later. Wait a minute, that makes no sense, because mine, mine, my bond hearing, supposed bond hearing, that's actually my ransom hearing. But just so you're not confused, bond hearing was the fourth. Four, two weeks later was the first arraignment date. How come, oh, you're just seeing what they did. They need more time. They need to stretch this out. They knew that he was going to plead no contest, I mean, uh, not guilty. Because he was probably talking all kind of stuff to him. Because, he, again, he's not, he's not stupid. He's got 16 years of education, all right? 
So they need they need time to figure out what to do with me because there is no legal lawful reason for what they have done to me at all. Everybody else they can say well they called up and asked for an escort. Even the 67 year old man with Parkinson's disease. They can't say that with me because where was I arrested? Racetrack gas station. They didn't come to my house. So I do not believe that I believe that after after the the two roommates after these arrests which which was they weren't booked into the jail until 4:50 in the morning on the 4th. That means they're going to be at the 3 p.m. Their first appearance is going to be 3, 3 p.m. of the 5th, the next day. So, what I believe they decided to do, because they found out the afternoon of the 5th that I know everything, that I knew that everything was recorded, and, and uh, 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 I knew that they solicited me. I, I, I knew everything. I knew there was no real girl involved. They cannot gaslight me. So what I believe is for these last two at the hotel, I don't think that these were recorded at all. Folks, again, they are deliberately what started out as, a, as, as trying to make one guy believe that they didn't do anything illegal what they now have is they have three men now they have the first man the first sixty year old man that knows he's done nothing wrong but they don't know that yet they know that they kidnapped him then they know that they've kidnapped me but they recorded it now they also know that they kidnapped a 67 year old man with Parkinson's disease and they well it was also recorded as well so I believe and then the only good thing that they have the only thing that they have on tape is these two is the two kids and they're the only ones now they finally have money but again it's not going to be they're not going to have their first appearance until the afternoon of the 5th. But they still recorded themselves soliciting these boys. And I already went over it to you. That's why I believe at the hotel room, they said, okay, look, you all just go out. You all go out. You get a hotel room, and we don't want you recording it. You tell them whatever you got to tell them to get somebody to show up with cash money and we're not going to record it and when instead of going to them they're going to come to us that way there's no excuse what exactly are they going to say it's just shaming it's just shaming the people and I've already described to you exactly that there, there, there is no judge that should now they were solicited no one there first there is no such thing as criminal solicitation of prostitution okay is there's no such thing there's no such thing as criminal offering of, of prostitution but this is what I want to show you here this guy the guy that drove in from the west side from Walden Road East He's got a vehicle, and they leave it. He's got a vehicle right there, and where do they leave it? They leave it sitting at the hotel, okay? So, uh, um, this guy, the guy that came from Orange Park, what, what did he fly? Did he take a jet? I mean, how did he get there? Because there is 
no vehicle description where the vehicle was left and there's nothing down here where on hit where on the first guy um, right here this is the owner's name and address and this is all the information that he's signature and saying please keep my keep my truck safe this was before they used to uh, before they started picking them up and charging you to impound them so they're not even filling this stuff out they're just because again they never ever ever plan to file anything they never ever plan to um, list this in anyone's criminal history because there is no file stamp okay so that means that now they believe that they have two new arrests and again these guys weren't booked he wasn't booked. The second guy wasn't booked into the jail until 1.45. That means, and he was supposedly arrested on Friday the 5th. Okay? Both of them. Friday. Right there. Friday the 5th. Alright? That means their first appearance is Saturday. The 6th. That means... This guy's first appearance is going to be before, now we got a brand new judge, and again, you're not going to tell me. By this point in time, it's so big, we've got the entire, both the circuit court, we got all hands on deck, because what the Jack city of Jacksonville is doing, what the, what, the, what the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office is doing, what the Jacksonville Vice is doing, and what the, what the, uh, uh, Fourth Circuit State Attorney's Office, both of them, both the misdemeanor as well as the felony is doing, as well as now three different judges, is they're, prosecute, they're, they're prosecuting people, they're telling people that they are criminal, that they are criminals because they were abducted, simply because they, they say that they were criminals. They are committing so many felonies, so many these are the they're worse than felonies okay so uh, and uh, uh, remember Ferguson Ferguson the third uh, Emmett Ferguson the third that's the judge's name because I'm gonna have my little run-in with him too okay but it's the af Saturday afternoon ladies and gentlemen what in the world did I do Saturday afternoon well I called up my landlord and I told my landlord that I wanted to bond out and my landlord said okay I can get you the money but the banks are closed now so you're gonna have to wait till Monday so that explains and again they listen to the phone for the especially for the felons they're having a cow because their whole thing is about to come crashing down because uh, I'm about to get out from underneath their control. I'm about to get on, out from underneath their control and they can't have that. So, we're done kidnapping people. Again, folks, all of these... Uh, None of this should have, after the second, it should have stopped with this, with this first thing on the second. If Sergeant David Stevens was a real law enforcement officer, a real law enforcement officer enforces the law whenever the law has been, whenever he, he or she knows that the law has been violated, no matter who it is that has violated the law. The problem is, it's his sting. The problem is, he's a know-it-all, control freak, bully, and he cannot admit that he was wrong. Well, now, the state of Florida, because of the actions of, of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office Vice Unit, because of the actions of the... 
uh, Mr. Uh, the Fourth Circuit Misdemeanor State Attorney's Office, and because of the actions of the Fourth Circuit Felony State Attorney's Office, as well as because of the actions of what? That's four different judges, because you had to one ju one judge that found probable cause to detain me. Okay, let's see. Re Eric, Re Roberto, one. Then the judge that found probable cause to detain me is two. Taggart is three. And now you've got uh, Frederick. What's his name? Ferguson. That's four judges. Four judges are just shredding the Constitution. Both the Fourth Circuit State Attorney's Office... Okay, and now we're gonna. You're not gonna tell me as soon as they find out. Oh my goodness gracious, he can bond out. They all have a cow, so now they've got to discredit everybody. They've got to get ahead of this, and they, that's when they put their little plan into action. And well, I've already told you what they did. Okay. There is no legal, lawful reason for any of these of of any of these arrest and booking and report documents to be filled out. This first 12 to 1997 supposed arrest was not arrest; it was a kidnapping, and the sting should have stopped then. But they were no. We're going to make this go away and then they kidnapped me, recorded themselves, documented, kidnapped me, then they kidnapped the 67-year-old man with Parkinson's disease, and then, of course, they got the two roommates, they finally got it down, and they finally got the, they finally realized that, okay, we just got to make sure that they have cash, because, again, none of these documents have a file stamp on it. But it's falling apart. It's falling apart because they just found out the afternoon of the 6th, Saturday afternoon, that I can bond out. So guess what? We're not going to dig our hole any deeper than it. They, they, it's over and done with. They do, the, the city of Jacksonville itself does not have a legal leg to stand on. And they know it. The only thing that the liar can do, once the liar starts lying, the only thing that the liar can do is just keep lying. Because if the liar ever admits that they've lied, well, then they will be held accountable for all of their lies. And the biggest fear that any liar has is to be held accountable for being a liar as well as for telling all of their lies. Hmm. Once again, I have to state this. Everything that I said to you in this video, everything that I showed you, real law enforcement, real prosecuting attorneys, and real judges know it is true and correct. Everything that I explained, exactly how how criminal all of this was, how incorrect it all was, how there was no legal, lawful reason for them to have done anything that they did. But more importantly, the criminals who did it, not mad at you, you just need to repent. They know that everything that I just explained, all of their jumping, all of the criminality, all of the, all of the, how everything that they did was not legal, but was illegal. They know it. And they have always known it. And once again, I am the last one. I am the only one, just to keep it simple, 
I am the only one that they could not shame. <clears throat> because while I did, yeah, I called the ad. I did not call the ad to see anyone. I called the ad and asked one simple question. I asked for information on how it all worked. And that's not a crime. And my version, everything that I've told you, shown you, is documented by them. I just showed it to you. And my original phone conversations, everything that they did to me, was recorded by them. It's, it's that simple. It was over as soon as it happened. And now you're seeing it. But again, once the liar starts lying, the liar has no other choice but to just keep lying. Because if the liar ever admits that they have ever lied, well then that means that they are admitting that they are a liar. And the one thing that the liar is truly afraid of is for is being outed for being a liar because the greatest fear of a liar is being held accountable one for being a liar as well as for being held accountable for all of the lies that that liar has told and as you can clearly see these people have been lying about a whole bunch of people ever since 1997. This has been going on a whole long time. And don't ask me why Almighty God permitted it to go on. Because He didn't allow it. He permitted it. All I can tell you is it, I'm the only one they had no business even calling me back. It's that simple. They had no business at all calling me back. They had no business doing anything after December 2nd, after they did what they did to the 60-year-old man on December 2nd. But this, they kept doing it anyway. Why? Well, because once the liar tells a lie, the liar has no other choice but to just keep lying. And you're seeing it. Now, they've been able to contain it here, within here, within Jacksonville. Until I found out about it. And how did I find out about it? Told by three mothers via a Facebook post, and I have that post. Am I mad at the mothers? Of course not. No, not mad at it. But that's when Almighty God's told me, it's time to deal with this. And again, for the, all the nitty-gritty details, there are two links to two different playlists. For all of the nitty-gritty details, the playlist is called the What, Why, and How All This Happened to Me. The, the link to the TubeU channel playlist is in the description wherever the description is of this video. And the second playlist, which is not as detailed, but it's still just as informative, is called Releasing the Truth Lines. And that, the link to that playlist is as well in uh, the description, wherever the description of this video is. It's over and done with. The only thing that they could ever do after the, I was, they were not able to deceive me would be try to come get me, was to, was to agitate me. Plain and simple. Just come bully me, try to goad me into a fight, try to goad me into a confrontation. And yes, it still continues today because Christians... Christians are having a hard problem with this because, well, it's making the city of Jacksonville look real bad because I keep talking about this. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I am not going to deny my God and lose my soul. I don't care how it makes you look. 
because apparently you all had no problem, you all didn't have any care or concern how you made the 60 year old man on December 2nd look. You had no, you had, you didn't care how you made me look. You had no, you didn't care how you made the 67 year old man with Parkinson's disease that you kidnapped on December 4th look. You didn't care how the two roommates looked. And you didn't care how the two guys that you fought, that you that, that you kidnapped that you solicited and kidnapped on December 5th look so why in the world would I care about how you look because you didn't care how any how anybody else looks get over it okay so the only thing that they have been able to do, the only thing that they could do, and they have obviously failed because, well, I'm still here, and no, I'm not scared, I'm not nervous at all. It's over and done with. And Almighty God is showing you that, Christian. These threats, these people are threats. The only thing that they could do is, one, hope that I would commit a criminal act. And then that would, oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. You're just trying to clear your name. No, all I've been doing all these years is reporting crimes. You see, they can't, they, I, I didn't give them an out because, again, they cannot produce a single arrest and booking report that says that I have ever been arrested anywhere in these United States of America for committing a crime because I've never com been arrested for committing a crime period. So the only other thing that they could do then was try to come, get right in my face. It happened so many times it's not funny. I'm not going to talk about that because, well, that's a rabbit trail. That would be me saying that I'm a victim and that's then trying to make it look like that Ooh, it's a conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy. It's not just about me. Right now at the, at the end of, of December it's just about, uh, 1997, it's just about seven men. Okay? But now think about this. How, is, how did this affect me? Well, one, all of my family thinks, all, everyone that knows me, everyone that knew me on December 2nd, on December 3rd, 1997, now believes that I am a sexual deviant that was trying to hook up with a 14-year-old little girl simply because the, the counterfeit imposter authority told them so. Now, 21 years and 8-plus months later, now the truth is coming out. And they are feeling bad. All you got to do is repent. They're feeling bad because, well, they believe the lie, just to keep it simple. They believe the lie. And now that they know that it's a lie, they feel bad about what they said. And they are convinced that I am going to shame them like many, many, have shamed me, not to my face, behind my back. Again, I'm not mad at you, because I'm not the one that did it. Rep all you got to do is repent of it, folks. That's it. Just repent. But now these criminals, these criminals now that I knew about it, they knew that this day was coming. And all I'm doing, and all I've ever been doing, is reporting crimes. I'm not mad, I'm not nervous, I'm not scared, I'm not demanding, I'm not attacking anyone. No, I'm telling the truth. And now, again, irregardless of what you decide to do, Christian, law-abiding citizen, you should not, Christian and non-Christian, law-abiding citizens, you should not be in a position, no one, should be in a position 
to feel like you have to make a godly authority, or any authority, take care of this. And you should not be afraid that if you report a crime that, like I'm doing, that the authority is going to come do big bad things to you simply because, well, you're making them look bad. And the only reason why you feel that way is because, well, you know that there are people, bullies, control freaks, that you know in your life, that you know in your family, that you know in your church, that do that. And you're afraid. You, you just don't want to. You just don't want to have to go through that. You you don't want to be shamed. It's okay. That's why they're being removed. That's why it's over and done with. Because they're not real authorities. They're not Christians. They're imposters. And you're seeing that now. So. The choice that you have to make is are you going to continue to associate with these known fakes, frauds, counterfeits, or just to keep it simple, bullies? Or are you going to remove yourself and get away from the bullies? Are you going to stand up for yourself? Because that's another way to, for you to stand up is just leave the bully be. Because what's the bully going to do? chase after you and bully you? No, they're not going to do that because if they do that, then they're outing themselves. They'll out themselves for the bully. The Word of God is clear. The Word of God is true. You resist the devil and he will flee. All you got to do is remove yourself. Just quit. Stop associating with them. And if, it's a pa if it is a family member that's bullying you, then simply, well, The reason why they're bullying you is because they do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you know that and you, you're scared. You're trying to love them into Jesus and you can't love, you can't love them into Christ. You've got, to, you've got to stand, you've got to confront them with the truth. But the only one that can do that is you. And that will be a whole lot easier for you to do once all of these big bads are removed. That's why all these big counterfeit imposter authorities are being removed. And that is exactly why I know that my situation is over and done with. This is a move of Almighty God. And absolutely nothing can stop a move of Almighty God. Because absolutely nothing can stop the will of Almighty God. So says... Almighty God. Just say it.